The thirty-sixth lesson. The fire. Continued. Meanwhile, the little red figure was creeping steadily forward along the slippery narrow cornice. Mr. Christine stood motionless, pale as death with beating heart and white cheeks. Father, I can't stand still any longer, Sam whispered. I'll fetch a mattress. Don't move, Sam. You may attract her attention and she'll lose her balance. Keep still, the doctor said. They say he locked her upstairs, one woman said to another. Shut up, Mr. Dale hissed, looking fiercely at the woman. But the doctor did not hear anything. He could not take his eyes off the little figure in red. At last the cornice was left behind and Lily slid cautiously down the old water spout. A minute more and the girl was in the arms of her father who was now kissing her. The crowd roared with delight. Three cheers for the little heroine. Three cheers for the doctor. And the crowd gave three mighty cheers. Hip, 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 hurrah! Suddenly the wind changed and a huge flame puffed out of all the windows. That was a narrow escape, one of the men said. He is a lucky man, our doctor is, another said. He sure is, an old farmer echoed. If he had not left his spectacles at home, that girl of his would have been burnt alive by now. They say the wooden staircase has been in flames for the last half hour. There is no other way up or down. He sure is a lucky man. You've mixed up everything, Grandpa, one young man said laughing. You're a bit deaf, I'm afraid. What did you say? I must know all the details to tell my old woman the old man said, turning to the laughing youth. I say, Grandpa, that such a girl is worth two brave boys, the young man shouted, looking with admiration at the doctor and Lily, who were now pushing their way towards Mr. Dale's car. They got into the car. Mr. Christine did not want Lily to see the fire. The girl was already too upset and excited. But Lily managed to put her head out of the car window and look back. She saw a swarm of people scurrying to and fro around the house. Some were carrying pails of water. Others were doing something at the firecock. Daddy, look! What are they doing there? She asked in surprise, tugging her father by the sleeve. Who, dear? Those people? Well, they're carrying water, if I'm not mistaken. But take a seat, pet. Mr. Dale's starting the engine. Look, he's quite ready already, said Mr. Christine, trying to divert Lily's attention from the burning house. No sooner had Mr. Dale's car disappeared round the corner than the fire engine came into sight. With much hooting, clattering, shouting, jingling and bustle, the firemen surrounded the burning building, which looked by now like a gigantic castle made of red and yellow flame. The fire brigade arrived too late. The house was burnt to the ground. Where are we going, Daddy? Lily asked, still too bewildered and not quite herself yet. You've won the bet, and Mr. Dale is taking you up to town to buy you the biggest box of chocolate we can find there, Mr. Christine said, kissing her again and again. Are you so very glad we've won that bet, Daddy? Lily asked looking at him in surprise. I've never been so glad in all my life, the doctor said, pressing his little girl to his heart. Indeed, he had not.